If you could go back and talk to first week of high school, Jessica, what would you tell her? I don't know that she would listen to anything I would say. Just saying, she's pretty, she was pretty like badass, strong-willed kind of person. But I guess I would tell her that that this isn't going to be where she stays, that the story isn't going to end here. This is High Tech High Unboxed. I'm Alec Patton, and that was the voice of Jessica Waters, Executive Director of Noel Academy in Providence, Rhode Island. I met Jessica at the 2024 Deeper Learning Conference because I led a deep dive session on telling stories of learning through podcasts, along with Brent Spurnack and Marcus Hung, and she was in our group. It being a podcasting workshop, we had some recording equipment set up. Jessica was curious about it, so I said, hey, why don't I just interview you, and then you'll see how it all works. And the moment she started talking on the mic, I knew we would be releasing this as a podcast episode. That's all I'm going to say. Let's play it. All right, Jessica, let's talk a little bit about your, your teaching journey, your experience. This morning I shared the six-word memoir, which was high school principal, not a graduate, because I actually dropped out of high school. So I have a GED. So my journey from high school dropout to now leading a school for pregnant and parenting and off-track youth is really how I got there through this experience that I had with public education. So why didn't you finish high school? My parents were, at the time, they, I was around 15, so I went to ninth grade for about a week, and they were, this was their third time being incarcerated. So I actually moved out and just stopped going to school, got two jobs. Because both your parents were incarcerated? Yes. Oh, wow. They went a few weeks after each other, but... <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, I don't want to like like go into deep, but what was like what, what were they doing? What was it? So they, uh, my father actually never had a legit job. He was always like, what we would call like a hustler. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, there the last time, this time that made me move out, they had a jewelry heist they did together. Oh wow! Yes, yeah, so they got caught. <laughs> gosh. Are you, are you in touch with them now? Yeah, and they, I mean, leading up to that, I think drugs is what really, like, drove the nail in the coffin for them. Sure. Yeah, I talked to them. They're sort of, my father was homeless for a lot of years, and now he has housing, and they're just kind of, you know, older now, so they've calmed down a bit, but not, I wouldn't say living a life I would want to live at their age. Sure. That sounds tough. Yeah. So when you say you dropped out of high school, you barely attended high school. Right. It was like a week or something like that. <laughs> I don't recall. It was, it was in the fall, like September of ninth grade. So one thing I think is like that could go either way because you could, you could either think like I'm out of here or you could think, oh, there's like a s- one stable structure. Yeah. I can just do that. So why, didn't you, why do you think you didn't go that route? The stable structure? Yeah, they're like, oh, like I should go- just stay in high Like I should definitely stay in high school because everything else in well, my life is. Well, I mean, I had this idea that I was going to drop out because I needed to work. Right. Because I was moving out. I got an apartment at 15. I oh. lied. Said I was older. Mm-hmm. So my mother before, so she had come with me to the school to sign me out. And the guidance counselor just slipped the papers across the table and said, just sign here. So it didn't feel like there were really any options anyway for me there. No one stopped me. With the guidance counselor, was just like, here you go. Yeah, what? no one stopped me. And so years later, my little sister is 18 years between us. She actually was in the same situation in the same town. Parents were, she was in DCYF care because they were back in there. I don't know if they went, they did, they went back to jail, but they also like, they just weren't doing well. And so she was taken. She was a student at the school that I accepted this job at, the school I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know she was a student. (laughs) So she was the first, she graduated that year, my very first year at my school. Well, you she didn't graduated. know your sister no. was at your school? <laughs> no. Wow. So you weren't, you weren't in, like, touch with your parents particularly? Uh, no, place. I mean, I knew she was in D, so I have care, but I didn't know that she, because she really wasn't attended even at the school that I'm at. Right. And so I was like, okay, so then it was my, I was like, you're going to be the first in our family to graduate, because she's the first of the, all the sisters. Wow. To actually have a high school diploma. Wow. 
But you must you must have a college degree though. Yeah. So then I <laughs> I have fake certificates. <laughs> it's all coming out now. It's all it's all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Anyway, um, so yes, I went back, got my GED first. Then I went to cosmetology school. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be a hairdresser, but I didn't like that. And I, I still have my license. I keep it active, <laughs> just in case, you know. <laughs> if you need a buzz, I can, you know, could do some color if you wanted. <laughs> hey, hey, that's getting that's getting a little personal now. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that, and then uh, I didn't. I wanted to groom dogs. I was like, this will be better. So I groomed dogs for many years. But I still, I wasn't satisfied with the world. I was like, I didn't come this far to only come this far. So then I went back and I was like, I'm gonna be a doctor because that was like, kids like me don't become doctors or lawyers or that kind of thing. So then I went through all pre-med program all the way through organic chemistry, all the biologies, everything. And then I get to the end and I was like, I actually don't wanna do this. I don't wanna go to med school. And so I was just drawn to helping kids that were like me. And so I was a science teacher. <laughs> wow. Yes. And then in my fifth year of teaching, uh, I was selected to be the Rhode Island State Teacher of the Year. Got to meet President Obama, go to the White House. It was pretty amazing. And so that just further pushes me to be like a window for our kids on what's possible for them. Yeah. Wow. So... You, principal, Jessica. <laughs> superintendent. <now>. Superintendent. <laughs> Sorry. Superintendent, Jessica. I started at my school as the principal. Yeah. Superintendent, Jessica, if you could go back and talk to first week of high school, Jessica, what would you tell her? I don't know that she would listen to anything I would say. Just saying. She's pretty she was pretty like badass strong-willed kind of person but I guess I would tell her that that this isn't going to be where she stays that the story isn't going to end here and that there is going to be a beautiful ending and life ahead that is safe that feels like you're accomplished and that you have meaning in your life. Mm -hmm. But she wouldn't have listened to me. She would have had some choice words. But yeah, what, what, do you, <laughs> what do you think she would have made of you? Um, I think she would have laughed at me and told me I was a dork. Yes. She'd be kind of impressed though. I, mean. I think she might, she might be, um, but she also is a fighter at this point, so she would definitely fight me. <laughs> Maybe physically, I don't know. I wouldn't really mess with her, so. <laughs> Got it. Do you, see, do you see yourself in kids now? Yes. And so when we have these fighters, I was like, oh, I know you. And I think that's what gives me the, the ability to speak to them and to have them listen, because I understand where they are. Yeah. So I'm sure you've encountered things where teachers like take things a little personally. It's hard uh -huh. not to take things personally with a student, where a student's being a fighter, where a student's. What should those teachers understand? What don't they understand? What should they understand? They should understand that that is no, it has nothing to do with them. And that as adults, we have to put ourselves uh, that aside. It has nothing to do with you. That student does not hate you, doesn't want to be mean to you. They're just dealing with their own traumas and their own issues, and that you need to uh, be there for them when they come to you. Mm -hmm. I do, I, I, they're far and few between when students will say something mean to me. I feel like I immediately am able to build a trusting relationship with them, so it doesn't happen often. Mm -hmm. But in my first few years, there was definitely a power struggle there, and I, and I was still sort of scrappy. So it was like a weird, I was like, still the street Jess, who was like, you're not gonna talk to me like that. Um, and so that took me a little while to be like, to really step back and create space. 
and to reflect. <laughs> yeah. How'd you do that? I mean, I would uh, definitely do a lot of deep reflection after school at home and try to remember that these are other people's kids. And so I always say to my teachers now, like, the thing that could really help you is to love other people's children like your own. Because when you look at them, when I see, when I have kids even now who've done the craziest things, and I look at them and I'm like, this could be my son. I have three daughters and a son. I'm like, you could be my son. And how would I want someone, how would I treat you and talk to you in this moment? Because you're not a bad person. You've done a stupid thing. And you have to have that outrageous love in order to, I think, get through it and be successful. Yeah. How old are your kids? I have a 23-year-old who lives in Maui now, and then I have a 14, 11, and 6-year-old. Are they ever just like, I don't need to go to school. You dropped out. You did great. No. No. No, it's not even like, the thing is, once you break that, there's no questions. It took a lot. It's a lot to bear. My husband's in the same similar situation with his family. And to be the people that changed the trajectory forever for our families, like we lifted them up and now they're up. And so it's not even a question. There's nothing on the table. There's no question about whether you're going to school or not. And in terms of college, you know, I believe they should have their opportunity to choose. Mm -hmm. So how can I set them up? for success and so that they're able to choose whatever pathway that they want. Yeah. All right, Jessica, thank you so much. You're welcome. High Tech High Unboxed is hosted and edited by me, Alec Patton. Our theme music is by Brother Herschel. Huge thanks to Jessica Waters for sharing her story. We've got a link to the Knoll Academy website and the Deeper Learning Conference website in our show notes. Thanks for listening.